for years, we have been constantly going to various police stations throughout the country, particularly in the cases of the arrest of African male political prisoners back in the day with Mr. Benchop coming forward. And we have objected to this term every time we go there. So this is not a new uh, problem. Um, what has happened is the arrest of Mr. Kadaki and Sudan is the occasion. Racism at the hands of the government. Let us just think about whether the issue. I think African Guyanese, African Guyanese speaks to our our heritage and the pride with which we relate to our ancestors who were brought here from the continent of Africa. It's succinct and it makes the point and it conveys with it a certain respectability and dignity. That in this very room, they are, everybody's going to have a chance. I have time. Everyone will have a chance. This is my right to reply as a government. I will not allow it. So what, whatever recommendation is made to replace the word Negro, we must be conscious of that because we don't want an abbreviation now which in itself creates some type of controversy. Because, for example, I can see that you're going to say um, African Guyanese. So when it comes to the female, they're going to say female African Guyanese, which is fag. I don't know if that in itself will create a new controversy. Residents. Residents. For those who are not aware, for those who are uh, let me move to Norris Middle. You're a trade unionist. You, you know what has been happening in Ghana over the years in terms of um, the the working class in particular. Uh, do you believe that there's a reason for um, perpetuating this, shall I call it a stereotype in terms of the word? Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. For years, we have been constantly going to various police stations throughout the country, particularly in the cases of the arrest of African male political prisoners back in the day with Mr. Benchop coming forward. And we have objected to this term every time we go there. So this is not a new uh, problem. Um, what has happened is the arrest of Mr. Kadaki and Sudan is the occasion and not the cause for the problem. It's been with us for a long time and I'm sure Mr. Slow will share um, some interesting de developments at the Ghana Police uh, Force where one sitting commissioner actually said that this should be removed from the police lexicon and from their statements. And after that commissioner demitted, demitted office, it returned under the auspices of another commissioner. But certainly, um, the objections to this have not been recent. Um, I have to acknowledge the fact that Mr. Benchop has been objecting to this for a long time. And there's several other people, but I'll, I'll leave it there for my opening statement. Uh, shall we go to Mr. Slow and uh, find out what, what what's the history of, of the use of this word? I think Mr. Slow is muted. Mr. Slow, you're muted. Yeah, thank you, um, Enrico. Um, good evening to all uh, viewers, listeners. It's a pleasure to be here to participate in this very important um, subject. As indicated earlier, I am a former um, assistant commissioner of police, I'm chairman of the Police Service Commission. I spent 40, 37 years um, in the Guyana Police Force, so I'm, I'm fairly well familiar with the um, procedures and, and these things. And as indicated by Mr. Hughes a while ago, um, this is not the first time this word has been objected to. Over the years, even while I was serving, um, the word Negro was objected to. And during the tenure of uh, Commissioner Police, see, um, Winston Felix, a decision was made to have the term removed. And I think the recommendation then was for the, the, the words um, Guyanese of African ancestry 
to be used instead. And that, that worked for a period of time. And my um, information is that when Mr. Felix demitted office, sometime thereafter, not immediately after, because if you recall, when Mr. Felix demitted office, it was Henry Green, then it was um, Leroy Bromel, and following Leroy Bromel, it was Silal Passad. I am told that it was somewhere around that time that the word returned to the lexicon of the police. This uh, We know MN or FN meaning male Negro or um, female uh, Negro. So, um, and I, I did some further research, which I'll uh, share a little later. And, and I want to see at this stage, contrary to the assertions of the Attorney General um, Anil Nandalal SC MP, this word has not been in use in the police force for over 180 years. I have the, the, the evidence, which I'll present as we go along. Could we hear from Ipadiji, um, where we have been making presentations to the United Nations? So, Olive, uh, Samson, could you come in on this? Chime in. Certainly. And well, thank you. Thank you again um, for the invitation to participate in this panel. Thank you to the audience for your interest in following this issue. It's a very critical issue, one that has a lot to do with the dignity and respect of people of African, for people of African descent. Um, we have taken to the United Nations, the, I think the overarching issue here is that um, the Durban Declaration and Plan of Action and drawing from that, the, in the decade for people of African descent and its plan of, act of actions, both call on governments to take a close review of practices, of uh, regulations, of the legal and institutional frameworks that are legacies of our enslavement and colonialism that are offensive, that are racist, and that are affect our um, participation in the society without the, those stigmas that draw from the past and that affect our equal enjoyment of our citizen our, of our citizenry um, in this country. And so this is just but one example of why it would be important for government to take to heed very, very carefully the what all of the requirements that they are signatory to, all that it calls on the government of Guyana to do in order to adhere to the plan of action that Guyana has signed on to. Some countries have not taken it as seriously as others, but in a country like Guyana, where we have the kind of racial divide and the kind of tensions that exist, it is really important that the government of Guyana adhere to and pay attention to the documents to which it's a signatory that call on it to address the legacy of our enslavement and of colonialism. Ms. Rana, as a young attorney, were you at all surprised that um, this word is still in use? Good evening, Enrico. Thank you for the question. Um, firstly, I must say that the usage of this word Negro by government agencies or state entities such as the Guyana Police Force is not something new, which I personally have observed as a young attorney on occasions during criminal trials or where evidence is disclosed in those cases, you will see the reference to um, a person of African descent, a male, as on X day, I arrested John, John Joe, male Negro. I put the allegation to Jane Joe, female Negro on this particular day. So it has been something that I have observed and something that I would have discussed with my colleagues and something that we at Dues, Fees and Stobie have discussed earlier and prior to this forum, which we are now on. The recent incident with respect to Mr. Kidaki, I believe, is one that has warranted, you know, the need for a public discussion and further discussion, a more solidified approach with respect to the use of this word Negro 
So while it may be perpetuated in the media that the incident with Mr. Amsterdam is what would have stemmed the discussions of the usage of the word Negro by persons or the objections thereto. No, that has not been the case. This is just the occasion that we feel warrants the sorry, warrants an opportunistic discussions. Let, let, let me move to Norris Vitter. Thank you, um, Kishwana. Uh, let me move to Norris Vitter. You're a trade unionist. You you know what has been happening in Ghana over the years in terms of um, the, the working class in particular. Uh, do you believe that there's a reason for um, perpetuating this, shall I call it a stereotype in terms of the word? Remember to unmute. Yes. Uh, first of all, um, Henry Poo, uh, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this panel. And may I also take the opportunity to extend greetings to our listeners. Uh, first, I wish to state that uh, for the word Negro to continue to be in currency, uh, particularly within state institutions, is uh, an indictment 58 years after independence 54 years as a republic it is an indictment on all those who are determined to ensure that this word uh, continue uh, to be used now other uh, trade unions we take umbrage because one of our cardinal function is to ensure that the dignity of all peoples are respected. And for anyone, any section of the society to deliberately determine that there should be the continuation of the use of this word strikes at the very heart of uh, what in essence our responsibility is as a trade union but more so it also impacts on the on ra on the race relations and I wish to pause here for this uh, moment. Therefore, the next the next step is, what is an acceptable word? What is a word that can be used? What, what ought to be used? I've heard African Guyanese heritage, African Guyanese descent. Uh, what, 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 what are some of the suggestions? If I may, if I may go round the table again. I think I'll begin with Olive again this uh, I'll begin with Olive this time. No problem. I think African Guyanese, African Guyanese speaks to our our heritage and the pride with which we relate to our ancestors who were brought here from the continent of Africa. It's succinct and it makes the point and it conveys with it a certain respectability and dignity. Anyone else want wants to chime in on that? Um, Enrico, I, I certainly believe very strongly that the appropriate description should be African Guyanese, male, female, or whatever um, preposition before that you wish to use. Um, the, the, the fact of this, though, is it's not just the, the name that has to be used. It, it's what has to come with it. It's all the training, the retraining of the Ghana police force. And... Um, but yes, the short answer to your question is that African Guyanese is the term that should be used. Let me go to Paul Slow. Um, again, Paul, remember to un unmute mute your mic when you're talking with Yes, uh, right. So thank you, uh, Enrico. Um, I'm not sure what would be the recommendation um, of the term or words to replace the Negro. I indicated earlier during the tenure of Commissioner Felix, they, um, they had started to use the term Guyanese of African ancestry. 
Now, I just want to caution that whatever term we, uh, we come up with, we must be conscious of the fact that the police use lots of abbreviations. So, for example, when they refer to male Negro, I know it will be, it will be MN, female Negro, FN, male East Indian, MEI, and, and, and the like. So, what, whatever recommendation is made to replace the word Negro, we must be conscious of that because we don't want an abbreviation now which in itself creates some type of controversy. Because, for example, I can see that you're going to say um, African Guyanese, so when it comes to the female, they're going to say female African Guyanese, which is fag. I don't know if that in itself will create a new controversy, so we have to be conscious of that. But Paul, if I could, if I could stay with you for a second in terms of policing. Um, over the years, the police have used words and terms. Not only do they, would they call people Negro, but then they would also put a, a nickname, a false name to them to further, shall I say, criminalize and make them look bad. Um, how do we retrain that? How do we um, get people to understand it? One ought not to do that. Well, it's again, you, you, I think you're saying the right thing. It calls for training because um, it's about human dignity. It's about human rights. And if policemen are trained in that respect, then they will come to understand that you arrest a man, um, let's say John Jones, and then you should not then tag on uh, uh, alias John Jones, known as criminal, John Jones, known as thief man, or saying something like that to further stigmatize that individual. But it will require for us proper policies, what we call standing orders from the, the organization, and not just only the creation of the standing orders, but making sure that training is done so that those things can be properly reinforced. Because once it becomes a standing order, it simply means that if you were to violate that, then you can be brought up under disciplinary charges. So again, it requires um, a, a, a buy-in by the administration and then the necessary training and, and reinforcement. And let me say this, um, this does not require any, le any um, legislative change. It doesn't require... Um, there's nothing in a change to the police force standing order because there's no standing order which suggests that this word um, should be used. I, my research um, shows it's a practice that came on at some stage. I'm not even sure when, but certainly not 180 years ago as stated by the Attorney General. Well, let's go to what the Attorney General said. Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. sorry I... on Niger. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I have a question for Mr. Slow, and I, I and um, and this just arises from what he said. He says that it requires a standing order. My my, my inquiry of Mr. Slow is, if there was a standing order under Mr. Felix that prohibited the use of the word Negro, was that replaced by another standing order? Because my concern now is not just the history of the use of this word, as as apparently the Attorney General wanted to suggest. Here, Mr. Slow is indicating that there was a sitting commissioner that gave a specific direction that the word Negro was not to be used. I'm assuming that might have been reinforced by a standing order or not, but the fact that it was reintroduced means that somebody with the intent, it could only be with, in with intent, with intent to use this degrading term, decided that they would set aside the standing order of Mr. Felix and say that African people must be described as Negro. And that to me, if um, I'm only inquiring for Mr. Slow, that to me seems to be even more egregious than the use of the term because it means that the police force recognized at some stage officially that this term was offensive, took steps to remedy it, and then somebody must have taken steps after that to reintroduce it. So it's almost as if you're reintroducing the term, the N-word, as a standard form of description. So that is my question and forgive me for jumping in it's just that it strikes me as being particularly disturbing right uh, thanks for that um well question or the, the the intersection um nigel what really took place is that the commissioner felix at the time gave uh, directions I think it was during a management meeting unfortunately the other steps weren't taken to make sure that this was codified in a standing order <laughs> uh, as such and i think therein lies the problem because if you are going to 
uh, make an order, such an order, you have to go to the other logical steps to make sure that the standing order is created. The training, necessary training is done. That is so important because just to say that we should discontinue using the word and then the training and the sensitization is not done. We get exactly what we have now, a re uh, uh, people revolting to the use of this derogatory term. I want to go back to um, something you said, uh, Mr. Slow, with regard to the Attorney General. And the Attorney General put out a statement about two hours ago with regard to the fact that he never really said that the word should not should be used uh, in effect uh, on his uh, Facebook page. Uh, what he was uh, pointing out is that the it, it was an opportunistic uh, position by uh, uh, the attorneys representing Kadaki, uh, uh, and, and, and they're here; they can defend themselves. Um, and the why now? because the police have been using that word for 180 years. One love, Delta 9 family, welcome back to... One love, Delta 9 family, welcome back to the flight. You heard it right there for yourself. The entire panel stepped forward on a unified front to make sure and ensure that not only the government, but that that information is left on record. On record so that persons that come across this information can do their own research into what's being said. And you can do your own research so that you can understand that the statements that was made before, after being investigated, this is what was founded right that the word negro was not being used for no hundred and something years and it is something that was once taken out of the books and it was put back it was put back by who and why this is when nigel oxen is interesting information you know when you realize what's really going on in that beautiful, beautiful place called Guyana. Why these things are being in place? We got to understand someone might be benefiting from the center and from either sides as to what's going on right here. It can't be that something is just perpetuating throughout generations and generations and no solution is being found. Right thinking persons on both sides got to come to a compromise so that the country can really move forward on a unified front. And to me, that's the only way that I think it could really move forward because a house divided can't rule. Somebody else is benefiting from the division in that home, in that country, right? Now, we hear the entire panel present on this. Let's see what the next move will be. Let's see what the ramifications will be from the right thinking persons in society moving forward with love and compassion for those that they find themselves to have that authority placed in their hands to deal with. Let's see what the next step will be. And now as we move forward, we see that on the ground, the people in Mocha had to step forward and put certain things in place and let certain things be known and speak their peace. And by doing so, a certain person allegedly, allegedly was put in their place. You understand? A certain person wasn't able to execute the entire task. A certain person might not have been able to execute the entirety of their mission for that day because of the boldness of the Mocha Arcadia residents and the persons that were present that day and they were prepared and they guess what had everything lined up to rebut most of what was presented in opposition to their cause that day 
let's go right into this content and see on the ground how the Mocha Arcadia residents allegedly put Kwame in a place. Watch this eh? If you haven't already, do remember, hit that subscription button buddy and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. One love. Because I sit here and it is really an affront to my reputation as a member of this government and I take it very seriously. Very seriously. Now, there have been many things said here and that's fine. People can have their views. But we must be able to be factual and to be accurate. And you would notice that in this very room, they are, everybody's going to have a chance. I have time. Everyone will have a chance. This is my right to reply as a government. I will not allow it. Everyone will have a chance. I am saying, President, for those, for those who are claiming, for those who are claiming racism at the hands of the government, let us just think about whether the issues. The issues that are before us has anything to do with race versus what the reality is. I, I know you came here well coordinated from the app new I know you came here well coordinated. One moment, please. One moment, please. One, one moment, Sylvie. One moment, please. Everyone, please. One, one moment. May I, may I, may I get your attention for one moment? Is this the impression? Is this the impression we want to give? Everyone will get an opportunity to speak. One at a time, please. Let's show respect to our distinguished guests by one person speaking at a time, please. We cannot hear everyone at the same time. You all have valid points to make. Perfect. If you put in an orderly manner, we will capture what you're trying to say. So please. If I could have, if I could have a moment, please. What I would like to do, and I thank you so much for your candor. I would like to limit this conversation to the residents reporting to me. <laughs> Mr. McCoy, is you would grant me that privilege if persons, if persons, If persons could form a line, share with me your thoughts, give your expressions, and I would say respectfully, in the interest of time, so that other neighbors could share as well, please make your point and we can accommodate quite a few people. My name is Amara. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you, Mr. C. Well, as you rightly say, if, if man they more believe that things are inconsistent than the reality want, all he has to do is pull his comments and send it to the DPP for the DPP to deal with it. But no, he took up the role of the DPP and, and, and did something which is unconstitutional.